And as we wait for people to come in, I will go ahead and start sharing this link out with everybody, and I will give my rambles at the beginning. But uh, welcome to the System is Down, episode 200. We are here with uh, David Weiss today, and we're going to talk to him about the topic that's going to make a bunch of people stop listening to the show very quickly. Uh, it is, of course, Flat Earth. Uh, to those of you who have been here uh, since the beginning of the show, you know that uh, we used to talk about this type of thing a lot more often. Some of you just came in, in because of my work on the Libertarian presidential ticket. but uh, And so you're here for the politics, and you're probably going to get triggered and all pissed off that we would even even give this man the time of day. But uh, that's what this show is all about. We're here to have the uncomfortable conversations and discuss the undiscussable like Flat Earth. And before we get into that, i got to remind you guys about our sponsors as I try and find this stupid link on Facebook. Um, our sponsors are as follows. Uh, you guys in the Downers Club, the people that uh, contribute to the show every single week. Um, you guys are what makes the show look bit bigger and better, more beautiful every week, except for when David Weiss comes in and makes me switch back to Zoom, and then I can't make it look pretty anymore. But, uh, you know, Sorry, it is man. what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And, uh, David, that link is in the chat now if you want to go ahead and share that. Yeah, I found too. it. I'm, I'm already on it. You cool. have to join. You're going to be a member to watch it, though. you got to join. Oh, do you? I think so. You shouldn't oh, have sorry. to. It should I be on my public, public page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, share this out, everybody, uh, if you are watching this right now. And uh, let's have some fun 200-episode 200, 200 celebration here. Um, you guys in the Downers Club, you guys' questions are going to be answered first because you guys are what uh, – you're the producers of the show. You tell me what you want to hear, and I, I make it happen for you. If you're not already a member of the Downers Club, you can go join and get bonus episodes every single week at patreon.com forward slash the system is down. And we're also doing a uh, promo right now for Christmas – where anybody who signs up at the $1 level or higher, I will literally draw you a picture, a one-of-a-kind unique picture, and send it to you in the mail. Now, that might not sound interesting or exciting. If so, don't join. But if it does, then join and support the show. Um, we also have the sponsor, Brave Botanicals. Brave Botanicals is who makes this Kratom that I'm drinking right now. Uh, David, you ever tried Kratom? What are your thoughts? I have not, and I've wanted to. Tell me about it. It's pretty good. It uh gives me a nice glowy energy it's a little bit uh, cleaner burning fuel than caffeine i believe and um it's kind of a smoother transition into and out of your energy and makes me a little sharper i feel and you can try it david right now at freeanceofkratom.com i uh, will you know what i'm you just sparked my interest i'm in i'm gonna order some right after the show yeah go to freeanceofkratom.com and uh enter the promo code tsid and you'll get five percent off your entire order whatever else you add to it but you can get the kratom for absolutely free Enter that promo code to let them know <laughs> that we are the ones who sent you. TSID is promo code. Uh, my, nope, not My Brave Botanicals. France of Kratom is the website. And we also have one more sponsor, and that's going to be it. Uh, the last sponsor is End the Two Party System. Uh, you can check them out at endthetwopartysystem.org. They are a 501c4 not for profit that is just looking to uh, in introduce ranked choice voting to people and push to end the two party system and who can't disagree with that. So I, I think they've already achieved their, their goal. I don't, <laughs> I think the two party system is completely destroyed and uh, I don't think it's ever coming back. Yes. Yes. And you know, there, there was a part of me that thought, you know, with all these newcomers coming in and uh, the, they're probably already a little bit triggered at the idea of flat earth, we should just come in and talk about everything other than flat earth for an hour and then do the rest behind the paywall just to piss them off. But, uh, but hang on. So <laughs> I'm not really going. To. All, uh, so the people that, that are ready to tune out that have already tuned out, sorry, you're gone. I was you six years ago. Yes. I had a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole and people started sending me flat earth stuff. Hey, have you looked into flat earth? Check out this one minute video. I would not watch the one minute video. I banned them from our social media for being so stupid as to suggest to waste my time. Yeah. It was really starting to annoy the, the crap out of me. You can cuss, and, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> banning, banning people, thank you. And, uh, and then finally another researcher, Sophia Smallstorm, made me look. She goes, Dave, you have to look at this. And I took two weeks to debunk it. I went to prove the globe. And since then I've quit my own business. I left my own company. I do this full time. And uh, I'm on a mission to show those wanting to see what's behind door number two. So you're making those big flat earth bucks, right? Yeah, the huge flat earth bucks. <laughs> People say I'm in it for the money. I do have an app that I sell, but the app is how you learn about flat earth. I get thousands of emails of people saying, 
your app has uh, has shown me. You know, I, I couldn't have done it without you. So, um, but I walked away from there. It is. Is that downloaded it, is that it today? Oh, you have uh, you have your own background. Custom <laughs> I background. do. I already yes. customized mine and everything. Look at you. While taking a crap this afternoon. Yeah. So so um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But I, well, I'm only going to talk about it because it helps you see flat Earth. Hang in there. And I, I have an incentive for those people. I have a thousand dollars. If somebody can supply a proof of the globe, a thousand bucks, I'll make it 10,000, but nobody believes that I'll pay 10,000. So right. we'll, we'll call it a thousand. But if you want 10,000, you can have that too. Right. Um, one proof of the globe. That's all I need. Okay. Yeah. We'll probably have to do a follow up then. Uh, I, I'm probably not going to be able to monitor the chat quite as easily on this live stream, but uh, we, we're going to take the questions that were pre submitted and we'll see if I can keep up with things other than nice. that. But yeah, uh, absolutely. And I have had plenty of people come on and rant about, you know, why flat earth is stupid and everything, but, uh, I'm not the person I've actually gone on. Uh, this is probably news to some, I've actually gone on two other podcasts in defense as the guy defending the flat earth, because in my own dig, uh, a few years back, it was like, you know, I can't say definitively, and this is basically where I stand now. I can't say definitively that it is or isn't, but I do know that things in what the official story are, do not add up. And that, right. that's the only thing that I, I can confirm. <laughs> and that's all you need to have. If you right. know there's a problem with the globe, that's it. Now yeah. you're on your way to seeing. Um, there, there's so many people waking up to the globe lie, or we'll call it the true earth. Mm -hmm. Because flat earth, like conspiracy theory, are weaponized terms, right? Sure. So the, the true earth is uh, unknown, but it is observably, measurably flat and stationary. Um, but how it exists, there's a lot of unknowns, but there's, you know, the globe is, has more unknowns and more impossibilities. So, you know, there, flat earthers have different beliefs. Some of them believe uh, there's an endless plane, that there's a dome over a dome over a dome, like a, like a Russian dolls, different layers, right. all sorts of stuff. But we all agree that the spinning, wobbling pear rocket water ball in a vacuum of space is nonsense. Okay. So we got to back right. up a little bit. We got to got to lay some groundwork. Um, before, like, let's go back to before you lost your mind and started doing. I can only assume hard hallucinogens. Uh, before that all happened, um, what was your life? <laughs> what was my life? Yeah, yeah. Before you were raking in the the flat Earth bucks, what the flat Earth? Who, bucks. who was David Weiss? <laughs> um, I was. Uh, I grew up on you know on the East Coast. I'm in a, a you know a fairly you know, I'm on the wet, the East coast of Beverly Hills. I'm in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, I live, and I agree. I live in a bubble, no pun intended. You know, I go on vacation to Hawaii or to the Caribbean, you know, so I skip all the places in between. Yeah. Um, I'm just a guy, you know, that, uh, you know, went to college and got a job in corporate America. And then, uh, after, after that ran its course, I started my own business. Uh, that took off amazingly well. I had my podcast. And then uh, I realized these two worlds can't live next to each other. And um, I took the one with less money that has more value. And that's sure. uh, the path of truth. And uh, I will say your, your podcast, you're talking about Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, right? Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, yeah, that ran for three years. And then uh, the, the Flat Earth actually blew up Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I think I and discovered you guys' podcast like right as it was about to die. And uh, <laughs> I, I was sad because I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a real podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I started the flat earth podcast and yeah. uh, we don't get, you know, this year has been crazy. We haven't gotten many episodes out, but there's plenty, uh, you know, for those of you new start at the beginning and go through it. I have two challenges for people today. Take the flat earth podcast challenge, listen to the first five episodes and you too will lose all your friends and family and respect <laughs> because you'll become a flat earther sure. or Take the Flat Earth app challenge, which is every day there's a new featured video on the app. Watch the featured video every day for two weeks. 14, time, 14 videos, short ones during the week, longer ones on the weekends. And um, then you'll know the Earth isn't the globe. So is Flat Earthism a religion? Is this, is this something that you have to have faith in? Yeah, so absolutely not. Faith is the, 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 what a religion is is science, scientism, the globe is a religion. People believe they live on a ball with zero proof. 
There's zero proof of the ball. We're going to get into that. And, you know, I know you're thinking boats over the horizon, sticks and shadows and days, day, you know, seasons, sunsets. We can go over all of that. Um, all of those actually prove that the earth is flat. Uh, heads exploding. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Just calm down, everybody. Get a cup of tea, a cup of hot chocolate or beer, whatever it takes. Sit down, relax and listen. Open your mind and listen. Um, it's definitely not a religion. A religion is faith-based. This is science-based. Now, my co-host is a Bible-believing, um, living Christian, and uh, he comes from the biblical side, and he has all the biblical proofs. But I never lead with the biblical proofs. I lead with the science. Yeah. And I go, and by the way, it's also in the Bible, okay? Because you can argue the Bible all day. You can interpret it all day, but you can't imp- interpret real science. And there's no science that shows that the earth is a spinning ball. As a matter of fact, every uh, experiment done over time by well-renowned um, you know, scientists to prove Earth's curvature or motion all failed and showed that it's flat and stationary. But Dave, I'm gonna blow your mind right now. Are you ready for it? Go ahead. I've been in a plane. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop, right? I, I've seen that curve, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> um, we all think we have, but nobody really has. And, and just remember this, on a ball earth or a flat earth, we can only see so far before the sky merges with the ground, whether there's a curve there or it's flat. You know, in, in a, if you go to Vegas and go into one of those long hotels, go to one end of the hallway, the, the lights on the ceiling touch the floor on the far end as far as your perspective. So things merge into that vanishing point rather quickly. So that's just because um, the hotel hallway is going around the horizon. <laughs> you know, I, do, I wasn't one that had a curve to the hallway and it's like, that threw me off. Um, but so, so my point is when you're in an unobscured area over water and Kansas or whatever, the sky touches the ground relatively quickly, less than 50 miles, you know, mm-hmm. 30 miles, you know, the, the, the clouds touch the ground as far as you can see the way you see it, they're not really touching the ground. Mm-hmm. It's just perspective because you can zoom in, open up that space and see farther. But your, your eye, eyesight, let's, let's say it's 20 miles, 50 miles, doesn't matter. It's the sea, when you look forward at 12 o'clock, you see the same distance at, at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, you're seeing the same distance. And if you plot all those points, you're drawing a circle. So if you took a picture and you could actually measure, you're gonna see a curve. Just like if I put a camera on my round table, I could see a curve of the edge of the table. It's not a sphere, it's a curve, okay? So we see in a circle and our programming tells us it's a sphere, okay? And by the way, the high priest of scientism, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, you can, he keeps raising what we call moving the globe post. Sure. Um, you, he says you can't see the curvature at 138,000 feet where Felix Baumgarten jumped. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says that that's, uh, you can't see the curvature that high. So anyone saying- It was a balloon that, jump, right? Yeah, he did it, uh, uh, the, the Red Bull space jump. Right, yep. He, um, he, he said that uh, he went at 138,000 feet. He said he saw the curvature, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, but he didn't, he just, it was a fisheye lens. As a matter of fact, if I show you guys, um, where's my, of course it's the one picture (laughs) I cannot find. Um, we'll, 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 we'll we'll get back to that. So go ahead. Yeah. I I actually, a few years back, we were, we had this conversation quite a bit back then. I just enjoy, like, even if it's completely stupid, like I love the, the, um, like the thought experiment of it. Like I love this theory, whether it's true or not, fine. But uh, I, I really love digging into it. I love arguing it because most people don't have that much uh, actually to hold it, to substantiate their argument unless they've been to space, which I still have yet to talk to somebody who's been to space. Well, but, um, yeah. And, and the ones that have been to space are just liars and uh <laughs> I, you know and they're slowly you know letting out clues and admitting admitting um you know the nonsense sure well, yeah there was one i think it was like the vice thing where they put like a sent like a blunt into space or something like that in a box it was just like some stupid video and yeah were like oh yeah that proves the curve but i actually took those and took those uh video clips took a bunch of screenshots put them together and i was like see here it's convex concave it changes and you can see the curvature of the box itself. It's clearly a, a fisheye lens. And, right. And then some and students did it. And, 
They, they call me a retard and left my yeah. page and never came back. But uh, so he, here's here's <laughs> Felix Baumgarten um, at 138,000 feet, and he said he saw the curve, and everyone's like, "This, the, everyone." You, the globe trolls don't even use this one anymore because it's so stupid. We looked and we looked at all these features on the ground. This is mm -hmm. planet New Mexico. This is all New Mexico. Okay. Right. So that just shows you it's a fish lens. There's no argument. It's planet New Mexico. And the other thing is the earth is turning at a thousand miles per hour. He went up, not attached to the earth, disconnected from the earth. The earth is spinning to the east. So he should have landed out in the ocean into the west because the earth is spinning out from under him but he mm -hmm. landed a couple hundred miles east of where he took off three and a half hours earlier mm -hmm. okay so he went up and he sped up and outran the spin of the earth okay i mean that's all you need right there game over thanks for having me on appreciate it earth is flat but you know we're gonna go and just every single proof that i thought i had um and, and by the way, your listeners, I can hear you. I can hear you, right? After we go through two or three more of these, you're going to throw your hands up and go, why the hell would they lie? What's the point? Why would they lie? Why does the shape of the earth matter? We're going to get to that later in the second hour. Cool. cool. Sounds good. Uh, w at what point did you like realize that you're autistic? <laughs> Years ago, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I, I am curious, like, what is your stance on like drugs and stuff like that. Like, are you into, I, cause the conspiracy community, there's like half of them are the Christians that are scared of psychedelics and stuff like that. Then you've got the other side that say it's like a uh, revolu revel, whatever it is I, what all religion is based off of. It's just opening the third eye and that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, you want, we can take a left-hand turn here. Um, I am a big believer in psilocybin as a medicine. Um, I've done ayahuasca with a shaman four times. Um, I believe in, uh, you know, CBD and hemp products and, and THC when, when used as medicine, not just to get high. Um, but, you know, and again, to, to feel good, that's, that's a form of medicine. Feeling good, it brings health. Feeling afraid and scared brings sickness and death. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, all about, I'm all about things used um, in harmony with the way they should be used. I just got to ask because, um, uh, first off, I completely agree, but I just have to ask because people are going to be wa wondering what exactly David is on right now, currently. <laughs> I am on non-caffeinated herbal tea with a scoop of organic honey from the farmer's market. You're the most boring flat earther ever. <laughs> um, actually, I'm, and I am on a, a spoonful of tiramisu. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> Somebody gave us a piece of tiramisu and I, I had it after my lunch. Sure. Um, I'm not boring. I'm kind of fun, actually. I'm, talking, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> you can uh, as much shit as you want. It's all right. I appreciate absolutely. it. So, um, like, when you first started getting into this theory, uh, what was the, 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 some of the things that kind of broke the camel's back? Because you said that you were pushing against it to begin with and were completely skeptical. So what kind of got you over the yeah, edge. So nobody be nobody um, just says, Hey, I'm going to be a flat earther. Cause it comes with scorn. You know, six years ago when we started this, um, it was, you know, you mentioned flat earth, the ridicule, the scorn, the hatred, the, the, the nastiness, the violence almost was unbearable. But now you mentioned flat earth and people are like, yeah, you know, I've heard about that. I got questions. So um, the awakening is happening. People, I don't know whether it, that we're just, they're, they're hearing about it enough. People are thinking or, or, or consciousness is rising. Um, I think I think that there's an energy shift and people are starting to be able to think and see. You know, mm -hmm. we're not taught to think in school. We're taught to memorize and regurgitate. And if you're really good at it, you can become the teachers to teach the next generation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, memorization and regurgitation is not knowledge. It's not learning. It's it's memorization and regurgitation of the controller's information. Um, so your question was, what was your question? I went off, I went off track. Oh, just like, well, what were some of the, the early oh. proofs and things that uh, pushed you over? Did you get into like Eric DeBay's 200 proofs? Uh, yeah, you know, I watched stuff? Eric DeBay's stuff and I was like, that's interesting. We can see too far. That's one of the number one proofs. We can, we can see too far. Mm -hmm. um, here's some video, you know, if, if you look at this, these ships are not going over the curve. This is just zooming out and they become too small to see. People yeah. think... Um, that things go over a curve, but they don't. Things do, depending on atmospheric conditions, disappear from the bottom up. 
um, and we can get into why that happens. It just has to do with angular size and um, atmospheric conditions. But you see that boat, it disappears. Your eye can't see it anymore, yeah. right? So people say it's gone, you zoom in, there it is again, okay? Mm -hmm. And then there's all sorts of um, miraging. See, this boat right here uh, is, 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 is beyond the mirage, but it's reflecting on it. Um, you can see that I call it the, um, I forget the, it's a doubling point or whatever. The, the, it, it doubles at, at some point. So here's a gigantic ship. And when we zoom out, this entire ship will disappear because you can't see things when they get too small. It, now, if that was going away and getting smaller and smaller, people look, it's going over the horizon. It's almost gone. It's gone, but it's not gone. It's still there. You just can't see it. And that's how our eyes work. Interesting. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and, and to those listeners uh, who listen to the audio version, you're going to be missing out uh, because we switched to Zoom just so David could share all of his show and tell and all the receipts, Here, which is good because you have to have it. And it's impossible to have this yeah. conversation without well, examples. You know, I'll, I'll try to be more descriptive in what we're looking at too. Sure. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, the religion of the ball is easy. You can just believe it. And when a dumb guy in a bow tie, you know, Bill Lye, the lion guy, um, <laughs> tells you that boats go over the curve, you believe it. You're done. You can go smoke a joint. You can do whatever you want. Um, you don't have to do anything. It doesn't take any thought to believe. Belief is the enemy of knowing, okay? Um, but knowing takes time, effort. I've been researching flat earth day and night while I sleep, you know, while I pee, everything. I am, I am always thinking about what is going on. So, yeah. um, good. Now, um, uh, just keep going with, keep going with some of these proofs. Cause I think, uh, it's important to make sure people know it's not just this, you know, a couple things there's, like I said, Eric DeBay's 200 proofs was one of the, right. the early things that got me interested in digging into this thing. Yeah. So there, and there's, there's on the app, there's uh we, there's no curvature, um, uh, playlists that that we keep adding to that we we can see things that are that are way way too far um, what I'm showing you here is people say what about the sunset over the ocean on a cloudless day okay right. so you know the sun is a celestial object above the cloud deck and that cloud deck merges with the horizon and the sun just goes beyond the cloud deck and sets um, but when there's no clouds, what people don't realize is the atmosphere is, uh, is magnified by the moisture in it, and the, um, the air also becomes opaque over distance. So right now I'm showing you uh, a, a candle representing the sun being pulled away on a flat table, and it sets below the table due to magnification. That magnification, that, that Pharrell lens there, represents the atmosphere. And that's how things set now again to, to fully understand how the sun sets on a flat earth you have to watch a whole bunch of videos and they're all yeah. in the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app it used to be a lot easier to find those videos but well, YouTube well, see, doesn't like the, these that's why anymore. i made the app because youtube like if you said hey dave send me a video on um on how um send me a video on on how the sunsets on a flat earth the next video that youtube will give you is a propaganda video send me a video on the moon landings how that was all fake boom propaganda follows it yeah so what i did is i created this app and uh, the daily videos the frequently asked questions um they were all followed by other videos hey mm -hmm. let me let me share the app because that because the app will will give people a good foundation of what the flat earth is okay absolutely and the share flat earth as much as you is, want yeah, the Flat Earth is not the Flat Earth Society, okay? If you Google Flat Earth, you're going to end up at the Flat Earth Society. Right. Um, you have to enable screen sharing. You have to oh, yeah. allow me to screen share or make me uh, yep. One second. Uh, something. Um, so Flat Earth is, uh, if you search Flat Earth, you end up at the Flat Earth Society, and that's, none of us believe anything that's on that website. It's all... It's all nonsense, and it's it's a it's a gatekeeping site. So people go there, spend five minutes or two hours there, and you'll never look at flat Earth again. It's like, oh, that's the dumbest shit ever. I'm not going to waste my time. So, so he, here we go. We live in the Antarctic basin. Okay. Wait, where's Antarctic, the turtle? What, what what's that? Where's the turtle? I don't see the. Turtle it's underneath bed. the earth. It's underneath. Oh, the okay, earth. you just can't okay. see it from this angle. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we live in the Antarctic basin, okay? Um, Antarctica is the, is the shoreline that surrounds the world ocean. It's not at the bottom of a ball, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the shoreline. If you look at my background, it's the ice shoreline that surrounds our world oceans. And what's beyond it, <clears throat> excuse me, is a, is a whole nother question. We can get into that in a little bit. But if you look on, on here, the sun right now, we're, we're going through December, and it's almost out to this outer yellow line. And this outer yellow line is called the Tropic of Capricorn. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yep. And the sun will travel out there on December 21st. It'll be directly over it. And then over the next six months, it'll travel inwards all the way to the Tropic of Cancer. So when we go all the way up to June, um, it's over the Tropic of Cancer. And it's our inner northern summer's inner northern summer because the sun is closer and because it's closer you know in the flat earth model the earth the sun is small and close um it's higher in the sky and we're warmer just think of it like a heat lamp okay Mm -hmm. um so the sun goes around around i'm going to speed it up the sun laps the moon you're like where's the moon or that we're going into a new moon right now but uh, the sun laps the moon every 28 days and as you can see as the sun goes around on this perfect clock the sun is the hour hand on the clock Um, The moon, it starts getting distance on the moon. The moon phases grow. And after 28 laps, it'll it'll lap the moon again. So I see your moon is materializing in front of our eyes. How does that work? (laughs) Well, because as the sun's farther away, I believe the sun's, it's not the sun's light that is uh, lighting up the moon. I believe it's the sun's electricity that is powering up the moon. But that's a whole nother question and we'll get into that. Sure. So so we just went past the full moon and it's getting smaller. and those are the, the phases of the moon. Mm-hmm. But um, if I turn on the stars, all of the constellations, um, they circle around at almost the same speed as the sun, except they're going just a tiny bit faster than the sun. And they lap the sun, not once every 28 days, but once a year. So the sun will slowly move backwards through um, each constellation. It's going to move, you know, the, the constellations just slowly lap it. Mm-hmm. So... Um, that's why the sun is in each constellation for for a month. All right. Yeah. So so there you go. Um, there's there's the sun and the how the, so the sun marks the hours. The moon marks the months. The stars mark the seasons and the years. Um, if I turn on the world time, this shows us wherever the sun is. It's noon. So right now it's noon in California. Right. It is five a it's five or you know six a.m. In Eastern Australia, it's 9 p.m. in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, this shows you how the time zones work. And I just showed you the seasons. You know, everything between the two yellow lines, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, that's the tropics because the sun is always there. So it's always warm in between there. We live north of uh, the Tropic of Cancer. I believe that's where you live. You're in the United States? Yeah, I'm in Illinois. Okay. yeah. So that's why we have the weather that we have. It makes perfect sense on the flat earth. Seasons make zero sense on, uh, on the globe. If I hit the question mark, up come the questions. Um, you know, where's the edge? Um, nice. Oops. If I hit where's the edge, oops, I just uh, blew that. <laughs> Let's go back. So if I hit, um, you know, what about gravity or, you know, why the lie? That's a good one. If I hit why the lie, up comes a playlist of a whole bunch of videos that'll explain why the lie, lay out all the proofs. Again, all of the information is there. There's also other uh, links. You know, you can learn about the mud floods down here on the lower right. Oh, you've got um, my guy Marty Leeds on there. That's all. That uh, Mar- Marty is the <laughs> Marty is the man. We got Crow Triple Seven Radio on there. Yep, These too. are all more education on this page alone than any university could ever supply you. Nice. Okay. And then we have different uh, languages for people that speak different languages. You have playlists in all these different languages. Um, On it also, if you tap the weather in the upper right, it brings you the dark sky. So everyone needs a good weather app. Um, Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the bottom left, we have the, that's the featured video of the day. Every day there's a new video. Again, you click it, it brings you to that video. And then if you drop down the little menu, here are all the other videos that relate to that. Um, and you could also, 
So, so here's, the, here's the thing. I tell people, take the Flat Earth app challenge. Just get the stupid app. It's $2.99, one-time fee, and take the challenge. And what people say is, hey, I saw you on Daniel's show. I got your stupid app, and I didn't want to wait every day, so I hit the video archive button, which is right to the right of the, the featured video button, mm -hmm. and I started going through all of the old videos. And, and again, it brings up, it'll bring up the current month um, as it loads. So here's the current month. And if you hit the little hamburger at the top, you got all the other months, tons of videos. And they say, I haven't slept in two days. My, <laughs> uh, my partner thinks I'm crazy. You know, they want to lock me in an asylum. Now what do I do with my life? And I say, welcome to Flat Earth. So again, I, uh, yeah, I, I've had the, the conversations. Like I said, I've, I've defended this theory, even though I, I'm not 100% right. sold. But so, um, so to the people that are like watching right now, um, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like asking this question, asking that question. We're going to get to all your questions that are in there. So don't be like freaking out thinking that I'm just giving this guy like a complete yeah. pass and letting him just uh, sell his really well, expensive $2.99 app on here. So It's $299. It's not $2.99. <laughs> right. No, it's $2.99. And by the way, there's a pop-up. Now, there's no ads. There's a pop-up that shows up once every 24 hours. It says, would you like to subscribe for $0.99? Cents? And I say – don't subscribe. You don't have to subscribe. You can exit out immediately. You don't have to watch an ad. You don't have to wait even a whole second. It pops up. You exit out. It doesn't show up again for 24 hours. Okay. okay. I gotta say, right? just, and if you have a problem the, with that, I can. Even all the other resources aside, just having the map there to show people makes the yeah. conversation a thousand times easier than like yeah. when I would I, have these I conversations in the app. past. It's like, I don't even know how to explain this. <laughs> I made it for myself just so I could show people something. I right. wasn't even going to publish it. I just wanted a trial version on my phone. And I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. I think I'll publish it. And mm -hmm. I literally haven't slept. I, I work with a guy in India. I haven't slept in two years because I'm talking to India every night. <laughs> and uh, it's literally, you know, 13 hours difference in time. But um, people say, what, let's say, we're just going to hit circumnavigation while I have the app open. Then I'll close it. Um, people say, uh, I've circumnavigated. I've gone from, you know, California right. and I went, I went west. And now if I take my compass and the flat earth, north is in the center. So my compass is pointing towards the north. If I go 270 degrees, which is dead west, I have to keep turning. Otherwise, I'll be heading south. So mm -hmm. 270 degrees brings me over to Indonesia, around to Africa, and it brings me back to New York. Um, and back to where I could also... I could also circumnavigate to the east. 90 degrees brings me in a full circle all the way around. I think I circumnavigated. I can even go from, you know, uh, in a straight line. I'm going from, uh, you know, Mexico all the way north, 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 north. I'm going straight. Uh-oh, now I pass north. Now I'm going south, and I'm still going straight, and I'm all the way over in Indonesia or Japan or wherever. Um, and I went in a straight line. I went north and south. What nobody has ever done, by the way, none of that proves that the earth is flat. Right. But what nobody has ever done is gone south, like from Santiago, south and popped up over in Australia or south from, from uh, Johannesburg and popped up over in, in New Zealand, you know, underneath uh, the ice cap or even stayed down at that, you know, 50 degrees south um, and gone, you know, around the short way to Australia. They haven't. They, they, no one's ever done it. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? Now, for right. your your normie listener here, um, it's easy to say nobody has done it, and I can't prove that they have done it. But my right. argument to that would be, yes, they have, and maybe you just missed it. <laughs> like uh, all all the arguments that people can use, like can be completely unsubstantiated just like you say there's um you know nobody has done it you can say you know maybe you just don't know or if you found somebody who had done it how would that change your perspective on this well that would that would uh, really be a problem for the flat yeah. earth we've been looking and plenty of people have faked it sure. um uh i'm gonna stall and uh come up with a photo so some people people say they have um so the world record, and they got the Guinness world record, was this trip right here. So they went from, um, I believe they started here on the East Coast, and they went down to these islands, and they went over to uh, the Philip, I forget what islands these are, um, Tahiti or whatever. Then they went over to 
Johannesburg. Then they went down to Antarctica. They turned around. They didn't cross Antarctica. They turned around, came back, went all the way up around, you know, to the West Coast, up around the North, and came back to where they started. And they called that circumnavigation. This is what it looks like on a flat Earth map, okay? That's not circumnavigation. If they wanted to do circumnavigation, they would have gone from south, you know, they would have gone from the north all the way down to Antarctica and then popped up over here. Nobody's done it. This mm -hmm. is what the world record is calling circumnavigation. <laughs> this path right here. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Colin O'Brady, we have videos on the app on the, on the Antarctica. Um, what about Antarctica question? Uh, claims that he circumnavigated uh, Antarctica, but uh, that he crossed Antarctica, and he didn't. According to his own notes, we, we show the path. He literally like went from here to here and to here and came and came. It's like they're they're proving the flat Earth with all of their stuff. And he also said that he used GPS and and compasses. There's no GPS in the, in the Antarctica, and there's no the compasses don't work in Antarctica. It's really? nonsense. Hmm. Yeah, we did. We did have a commenter uh, who said he he tried to stop us and said Ele electricity powering up the moon. What? <laughs> okay, all right. So that's that's great. So so again, let me let me start off by saying I usually start by saying anything above how high we can get or anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica is off limits. We we can argue all day about it, but we can't prove it because we can't get there. So. We have to believe, okay, so on, um, if you're away from the city and there's a full moon, clear night, you can read by it, right? You can open up a book and read, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. All right. You, it, it casts shadows on the ground. It, it's bright enough to cast a shadow on the ground. So here's the full moon right here, okay? And one, a single source light lighting up a sphere would have a hot spot and then it would get dimmer towards the sides. But for some reason, the moon is fully lit edge to edge, like almost like there's a light inside of it. I'm not saying there's a light inside of it. Sure. So we have this belief over here that this is what the moon is, a dusty, dirty ball, you know, rock gray ball. where really they're, you know, shiny saw, dirt. Yeah, so that, that, so that light right there is coming back so bright to earth, 238,000 miles away that you can read by it in the middle of the woods. I'm going to say bullshit, all right? And then the other thing is you have to understand what the inverse square law of light is, and that is, you have a light of X brightness. Every time you half that distance, it gets four times brighter, okay? And then you half that distance, it gets four times brighter. So if the, let's say the moon was one lumen, this is more than one lumen. It's probably like 20 lumens, but we'll call it one lumen. And you go halfway to the moon, it's four lumens. You go halfway again, it's 16 lumens. You go halfway again, it's 64 lumens, okay? This is science. And by the time they get 100 miles away, I think the number is something like 10 million or, or it's even more. It's like as bright as the friggin' sun. Does this look as bright as the friggin' sun to you? Absolutely not. It, it, it's, that light is not that light, yeah. right? So what is the sun and the moon? I don't friggin' know, okay? Um, you know, when there's a new moon, it's gone. Nobody can see it. For over four, the shortest time it's ever been spotted, once the moon goes new, no high flying aircraft, no, no, nobody on the fake space station, nobody anywhere with any special lens, nothing has ever seen the moon in less than 40 hours. 40, I think it's like 42 hours or something. Okay, that's almost two full days. Where did the moon go? All right. Where did the moon go? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we have some theories, we have some experiments that we can do that could speculate on what it is, but again, we can't get there. Um, the moon is the biggest mystery on the globe and on the flat earth. You know, <laughs> so it, it, you think this dirty, dusty rock can affect women's reproductive cycles and people's <laughs> attitudes, or perhaps this electric magnetic system that we have is affecting our electrical magnetic bodies. You know, mm -hmm. we're connected to this electrical earth. Now I got to ask, and I don't know if this makes any more sense on a flat earth than it does on a globe. And I, I will never claim to be what some would call like a smart man or anything. But mm -hmm. uh, during the day when I in Illinois can see the sun and the moon both in the morning sky, how does that work on a globe or a flat earth? Like what is China seeing at that point? It worked. It worked. It kind of works on both. 
So um, here's a picture of the sun, uh, the moon and the moon taken from the UK and from Australia at the exact same time, okay? So they're seeing them at the exact same time. One's in the night sky, one's in the day sky. This goes to my theory that the moon and the sun are above the firmament, AKA the dome, and are being projected. Their light is being projected into our reality. I could show you that in a minute. Um, and that's why when there's a new moon, no light, no light coming off the moon, that there's nothing to project in and therefore nobody can see it. Um, so, uh, and again, what about eclipses on the app? Hit that button, then you'll start to see. Then you'll be like, oh, the, I start to get it now. But um, what I was saying is the sun is like a Tesla coil. And you, you bring a Tesla coil near a bulb and it fluoresces. And depending on what gas is in that bulb, it fluoresces a different color. Well, the majority of the sky, the high sky is nitrogen. Nitrogen fluoresces blue. So we have our Tesla coil way over there and it's lighting up the sky. If you're on the uh, west side of your house and the sun just appears on the horizon on the east side, you know, it's morning, dawn, the sun comes up, you can read the newspaper on the back side of your house and the house is completely 100% blocking the sun. Why, how is that possible? Because the daylight, the electrified sky is giving you daylight. Sunlight and daylight are two different things, all right? So, and as you can see behind me, there's day next to night without a barrier. Right. It ends because that's the, that's the throw of the sun's energy. It can only go so far. It yeah, it, it's all it's all fascinating and everything. Uh, so you do you do uh, subscribe to the dome theory? I know a lot of people. That's kind of like a back and forth. Wait, amongst say uh, you, you cut out for a second. Subscribe to what? The dome existence, like the firmament so, itself. So uh, so again, there. You know, the second law of ther thermodynamics says you can't have high pressure next to low pressure without a uh, without a physical barrier. Now, I don't believe space is a is a dome is a is is a vacuum. I believe space is some sort of liquid. Um, mm -hmm. Again, people short circuiting. So, again, if space was this vacuum, it makes no sense on how we could have this high pressure Earth next to a space vacuum. You know, why doesn't it just suck all the air away? Because mm -hmm. I can take a straw and suck water or air up and away from the Earth with the weak vacuum of my mouth and lungs. But the infinite vacuum of space can't pull the air off. And, you know, people say, well, gravity, gravity is holding this magical air to the earth. That's baloney. I can, again, pull air up and away with effort effortlessly. So gravity is, um, is a made up nonsensical thing that there is no proof of. Now that's uh, going to trigger some folks, just the idea that gravity, their precious gravity, like how, how are we not floating away, Dave? Okay, well, I, I will explain that. The, um, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson says that a gravity, he admits gravity is a theory. They don't know what it is. Here's how stupid gravity is. Um, let's say I owe you a hundred bucks and we agree, I owe you a hundred bucks, okay? I'm gonna give you $4 and the rest is gonna be dark dollars, 96 dark dollars, okay? You can't see them, there's no proof they exist, but I'm telling you they exist, we're even. Okay, done. That's what they have. They have dark <laughs> matter. They don't know what the yeah. fuck it is, but their right. equations still don't make sense when they when they fudge it with ninety four percent dark dollars. Okay, yeah. it's it's complete and total utter nonsense. Hey, well, what would you? How would you describe Jupiter? We're taught it's a big giant gaseous planet with storms sure. and, and and the storms circle in different directions. Some of the rings go clockwise, some go counterclockwise. We've mm -hmm. all seen their bullshit videos, right? Here's two official pictures from NASA, right? Two years apart. And this one here, they said, look at these amazing auroras we found. We, we, we were able to <laughs> photograph, right? You're laughing. You're laughing for those people <laughs> listening. Because so a, a two-year-old that doesn't even know how to use Photoshop can do a better job than this, right? But if you lay these two pictures over each other, every single little ripple is the same on the other one. It's so exactly it's the same. You just got a hat. That's all. Two years apart. Yep. Two years apart. This is, that's all you need, but that's not all we have. We have endless bullshit. The, the, on the app today, NASA faking space again, they had a soccer ball up there and they were kicking it around. First, you wouldn't kick a soccer ball around in there. It would break shit. Um, <laughs> 
but one of their heads disappeared because it went beyond the green screen. It was, it's unbelievable how many times they screw up. It, it's just left and right. I mean, here, NASA does all of their training in the National Buoyancy Lab, okay? Mm. Why would you train in a fucking swimming pool where everything's trying to get in, where space, everything's trying to get out, okay? Right. And, and look, this is, this is all done in a friggin' pool, and their pool has green screens in it. Why do you need green <laughs> screens to make it look more real? Right. Okay? It, it, it's everything. Wait, remember a couple of years ago, NASA had uh, the, got a, um, the space station got a little hole in it, micrometeorite, and they fixed it with what? Do you remember? No. Duct tape and gum, okay? Are you serious? That's what they fixed it with. I think it was duct tape and gum or duct tape and putty. Well, check this out. Chris uh, Hatfield, the, the, other, the other lying you know, astronaut, he, he tweeted this picture, and, and this is the picture, but it happens to be the same picture that this, uh, that this band used on their album you know, years before. Same picture, same hole. That's the hole in the space station. Holy shit. Okay? They're lying <laughs> to us they're lying to us on a scale that most people can't believe do you know so they're not even they're not even making their own lie picture they're using stock imagery now they're using stock I, footage <laughs> i i, I the, 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 no we could argue all day they do it on purpose to see if we're paying attention they're mocking us or they're just that fucking stupid okay i we can argue all day i don't know the answer could be a combination of all of it um did you know that the disney character pluto was made the same year that they discovered the planet Pluto. And this picture right here is the most, just Google a uh, recent picture photo of Pluto. The, I think it was the Cassini spacecraft traveling at, I believe it was 66,000 miles an hour or some ridiculous speed, you know, yeah. satanic number. Um, took this picture, it was a well-lit picture that has an outline of friggin' the dog on it, uh, of Pluto, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about this though. Pluto is a little farther from the sun than we are. It's so far that the sun looks like a friggin' star to, if you were on Pluto. How is a star light this friggin' thing up so good that a spacecraft with a four megapixel camera can take a picture going 60,000 miles an hour? Maybe they used a flash. I don't know. Ah, I'm not a photographer. You know <laughs> I didn't think of that. I did not think of that. Debunked. Um, so is everybody like SpaceX and these like smaller companies, Chinese companies, all, all, everybody's in on this. Everybody's working together. Right? Did you watch the, 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 the space, the Chinese landing on the moon to grab dust the other day? No, nope. dude, it is worse than, than the PlayStation one. It's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst garbage ever. And, and people just believe it. And I think the people that believe it, they don't watch it because if they watch it, their, their brains would short circuit. Mm -hmm. Here, check this out. There, NASA admits they have no photos of space, but they have two photos, uh, 2012 and 2002, I think. So this is the 2012 image of Earth, okay? This is the image of Earth. So we see the United States here. Well, I drew a circle on this map, right, showing you what we're seeing. Yeah. We have to believe that all of this land, all of this land is on the other side of that ball. Yep. You're laughing. You're laughing. <laughs> because <laughs> it's ridiculous uh again i i can't say that i'm 100 percent sold i can't say why i'm not 100 percent sold yeah, I, would I, love I, for can, somebody, I can tell you why you're not 100 i would sold love for somebody he, to convince me that it's not true but yeah. uh because it's here's just why. ridiculous <laughs> it's it, because nobody likes having their ball taken away all right, right. we are indoctrinated before we could talk, you know, Sesame Street with the Yip Yaps and Werner von Braun, the head of NASA, was on Disney. I mean, I'm yeah. in on, uh, you know, he's on Disney, but he's also on Sesame Street. It's ball indoctrination. You go to school, what's in the front of your kindergarten class? A globe. A globe. Right? Wait, you have a globe right there? Look at the bottom of the globe. Read the sticker. What does it say? Uh, Walmart.com. Um. <laughs> Read it. Uh, made in India. Is that all it says? It says globes are not meant for educational purposes, but only decorative purposes. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Why, why is that? Why, why would they have that on every single globe? How did I know that sticker was on your globe? You know, it's okay. funny. I got that globe as a gag gift a couple years back at Christmas. My brother-in-law got it for me because he knew that I enjoyed digging into the flat earth stuff. And he got it for me to be a dick. Didn't even occur to me that it says, Hey, this isn't true on the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 they, they always tell us the truth. They always tell us what they're doing. Yeah. So what about the moon? The moon is a sphere, so the earth has to be a sphere. So of course. here, wait, that's not the first one. It's showing you that it's a cup. 
What's the next one? Is the next one a sphere? Is yes. this one a, is that one's a sphere right there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, it looks like a sphere, but it's not. It's flat. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Is that one a sphere? Mm, yes. Yes? Yep. Nope. It's a bowl. <laughs> okay. Damn. Is you. that one a sphere? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Yes, you got it. I got it. So, so, it. so again, you have lights in your studio. Yeah. Okay, on the ceiling. Is there any lights in the ceiling? No, uh, not at the moment. No. All right. Well, pretend you have lights in the ceiling. All right. Look up at those lights and tell me what shape the floor is. Uh, the floor is. No, no, no. Look round. at the lights <laughs> based on the shape of the lights. Tell me what shape the floor is. The point is, stop looking in the sky where optics are all screwed up. And, and, and telling, you know, and, and saying what the floor is. You know, our optics have outgrown their lives. This is a star zoomed in with a super zoom camera. Mm. This is uh, uh, Capella, I think, or, or um, Arcturus. This is Arcturus. Mm. And every star has its own cymatic pattern, okay? This is not what NASA shows us, right? Here's Arcturus, right? This one's amazing. When you, when you can zoom in on this on a clear night, this is is within the earth system. All of the lights that we see in the sky are within the earth system. Okay. But does that, uh, I mean, does that really negate anything? Cause they say it's, you know, it's just a big ball of gas and I don't know what a big ball of gas looks like outside of the well, sun. Does that look like a big ball of gas? Would I be able to zoom in on that? Let's talk about, um, let's talk about what um, here. I don't, I don't have really an image, but we have the giant, this isn't the scale. So the Earth is um, the Earth is the Sun is one of those big uh, yoga balls, one of those big yoga gym balls. Okay, sure. and the Earth is a BB next to that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're told. Okay, you with me? Yep. So you're on the top. So imagine you're standing on the Earth. You're out in the middle of the ocean on an island. You can see 360 degrees around, and the and the Sun is only a mi the the Sun the actual size that they tell us is a mile over your head. It's just they, we moved it really close to Earth for demonstration purposes. It's going to fill the whole sky, horizon to horizon. Will you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to move it. How far away is the sun? Far. Far. See, I didn't know the answer either when I when I when I was defending. The <laughs> I, I used to have notes. I used to know yeah. the answers. To so these it's questions. ninety. I know more about the globe than the people that defend it. Yeah. The sun is ninety-three million miles away. So it's. It's close, it's filling the sky, horizon, horizon. I move it 93 million miles away. It's now the size of a pencil eraser, or not a pencil eraser, a dime held at arm's length. Agreed? Okay. Just like we see it in the sky, okay? So it reduced from the entire sky to the size of a dime. If I made it twice as far, how much smaller would it get? Would you be able to see it? Before you answer that, let's make it easier. Eight times as far, could you see it? Helpful. Any lot, very good. A logical thinking mind would know, well, it was the entire sky and it went to the size of a dime. If I went eight times farther, there's no way I can see it. The closest star that they tell us is four and a half light years away. Okay. If the sun was eight times as far where I said, where we just both agreed that you couldn't see it, that's a light hour. Okay. The closest star is four and a half light years this is where your brain just turns into sauce can't mm -hmm. calculate those numbers because those numbers don't even exist yep. okay we're I, told I, mean, I, I have questioned like how come there's one star that's <clears throat> the only one that's really close and we can see it really well it lights up everything and then we've got all like they're all in the vastness of everything they're so Wait. far away from each other that's uncalculatable but they're all the same size for some reason what about what about polaris that doesn't move right Polaris, the North Star, never moves, right? So check this out. The Earth, besides spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, it's orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. Interesting number, okay? It's chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, okay? Mm -hmm. While it's orbiting and chasing, that entire system's moving sideways at a million or two million miles an hour, a ridiculous number, over a million miles an hour. But the North Star somehow never moves off of the axis of rotation of the Earth. This is, uh, I'm telling you stuff like, hey, if I was pitching a movie to you, hey, check this out. I have this movie, the Earth is spinning and it's over. You'd be like, get the fuck out of here. No one's going to believe this shit. 
Okay. And and in all of that motion, we're sitting here calmly no. at peace. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait. In all of that motion, you, you stole my tagline, dude. Sorry. <laughs> um, in all of that motion, we have this. Right. Okay. We have this. All right. We have these perfectly calm lakes, zero movement. And by the way, people say, well, it's because we're already moving at a consistent speed. If you're going 100 miles an hour in a car, you could drink your water. You could even, you know, do whatever you want. Take a friggin' turn, okay? Everything's gonna slosh away. If you're on an Earth, forget all of the other motions. We're gonna take the slowest motion, the spinning of the Earth. You're dropping at five miles a minute, okay? Five miles a minute. That's yeah. curvature. Turning is acceleration, mm -hmm. okay? So, and we have this. Right. It, and it, it doesn't make any sense. And don't forget, again, we see star. We're told that the stars that we see are, some of them are, are way farther than four and a half light years. The closest one is four and a half light years. Nonsense. You couldn't see something a light hour away, no matter how big it was. Hmm. You know, at, make it a light day. That's a, a light week. It's insanity, these numbers. They make no sense. Check this out. 25 and a half Two trillion miles is four and a half light years. Trillion miles. Trillion doesn't calculate in your brain. How long is one trillion seconds? Take a guess. Uh, if you guess it within years. a year, I'll give you a hundred bucks. 50 years. 31,000 years. I was close. <laughs> yeah, you were close. Sorry. <laughs> Very close. So just think, just, just think again. One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. And we're seeing something 25 trillion miles away. Okay. Come on, people. This deception is the most important deception to the elite ever. It's how they control us. Mm -hmm. let's, let's touch on some of the why before we start getting into some of the listener questions now that we're in second hour here. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know we, wow. Like we transitioned. I didn't even know it's like going from one season to another. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so why? Like, who is responsible for all this? Like, <sighs> who is are it they? just this handful of flat earthers, the normies, and then thousands and thousands of people that are in the know that are all just keeping hush hush about this? Or what's going on? Yeah, you know, is that me or you ringing? I don't hear anything. Um, what kind of a ring? I, like I'm a phone hearing, ring? I'm hearing a, a Skype ringing. Oh, it's not me. <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> there you go. I didn't turn Skype off on my phone. Um, so, so where are they going? What was the question? The question was, Ooh, and why? Oh, are the normies here? Yeah, I got it. So there's different groups of people. There's people that I call normal Globers that have never thought about it. They were taught it. Guy in a bow tie and a white jacket you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson and their teachers told them, therefore it must be true. Never questioned it. Never, never, you know, just believe, you know, boats over curvature and sticks and shadows. Um, those are normies. They haven't looked into it. And they're so programmed that when you mention it to them, they tune out, they unsubscribe and they give you the finger and they go, I'm not listening to you. You're an idiot. I'm not going to look. I was that guy. I was that guy. Yeah. And um, those people will refuse to look. Then there's the other people that are still hanging with us that are like, holy crap, this guy is making some friggin' points. Uh, I can't believe it's true. Why would they lie? How would they get away with it? So then you have your, your, your scientists and your, your uh, educators that don't know. They're literally brainwashed by memorization and regurgitation in their, edu in their indoctrination school. Okay? So they don't know. Some of them figure it out. Like I did. I mean, I'm, I'm smart, but I'm not, I'm not super smart. You know, I, I, I mean, you're as smart as you want to be. Okay. And again, I don't want to be a flat earther. I don't want to feel special. I don't want any of this. I just want to know the truth. I want to know where I am. We're going to get into that in a second. Sure. Um, and then there are the elite that know. Okay. The, did Obama and John Kerry know? Okay. Um, they sure mentioned Flat Earth a lot in their speeches, but they were driving people to the Flat Earth Society, okay? They were mocking it, okay? Because they saw this awakening coming. So I think they know. I think Hillary Clinton knows. Um, 
do do most of the people in Congress and the Senate know? Probably not. I think they're just, you know, that's a whole other category of soulless, you know, people that have, have just lost their way. Um, how many people in the elite know? I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think it's as many as you think. You know, what about everyone at NASA? Um, I think that most, there's less people at NASA than you realize. And most of them, the majority of them are compartmentalized. They don't know. They built, you know, the, the hinge for the door and the meter for the thing. And the, the, some, somebody, I forget who said it, the people that are in the control room, you know, when you're, when you're watching the NASA launches, you have all the people in the control room cheering, you know, when, when they have a success, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they admitted that they do so many simulations that they can't tell the difference from the simulation to the real flight. Can you imagine that? They can't, they, <laughs> they, you, know, you know why they can't tell the difference? Come on. Uh, I'm going to assume you're going to say that there is no difference. <laughs> there is no difference because it's all just data being fed to them. Yeah. And uh, they're just, they just believe it. So again, they do these simulations. They can't even fathom a lie that big. And, and that's, uh, that's where they, you know, he, here's, um, here they are. Yeah. High five in this guy knows he's, he knows, he knows you're at the slot, but uh, probably 90% of the people in that room don't know. Hmm. Okay. So when they do like the, uh, like I've seen the videos where they have like a class call in and they'll talk to the astronauts and they'll show them like these, like yeah. show them water experiments and things like that on the, which I know it's, it's pretty dangerous to do that in zero gravity, I would imagine. But, uh, Yes, uh, doing stuff like that. How do they? How do they? How do you think that they pull that off if it is fake? So they they um, some of the stuff, most of the stuff that they're doing with the classes, they're they're doing it in green screens, hanging from wires. Um, some of the experiments that they do, they do it on a zero g plane, um, where the experiments are edited over multiple zero g flights. You know what zero g plane is, right? Yeah. And, uh, and you can see it like this one girl had this experiment a couple of years ago where she had this ball, this track and this ball that went around the inside of the track and they, they did it, but they said, we couldn't do it live. So we have a recording. Well, they couldn't do it live. Right. Why couldn't they do it live? They're in space. Just right. put it on and, and do it. Hmm. And it's, it's nonsense. And by the way, when they have all the kids come up and they're asking the questions of these astronauts, um, they're, it's the same thing. It's like, what are you doing in space? What, what's, what, what experiments are you doing? Oh, we're doing science. We're doing science. They grew lettuce. You know, they, they play with water balls. They, they're just, you know, what's it like to eat? How do you use the bathroom? Well, the bathroom proves the space station doesn't work. But I'm going to point out something. I'm going to bring up a picture, and I'm not going to say a whole lot about it, okay? This picture right here is of the Challenger astronauts, okay? And it turns out, you know, this is the one that, this is the first time a TV was dragged into every classroom. So every kid in America and uh, most of the world saw this live because their teacher, Krista McCauley, uh, or maybe that's her over there, I can't tell, um, was, uh, was going into space, all right? Okay. So uh, I'm trying to get out of the way here. And it's the one that blew up and it traumatized the whole world. And the, pro the thing is, Six out of the seven of them have identical twins, identical twins that go by the same name, okay? That most of them work for universities, right? So, okay, NASA likes working with people that have twins because they can measure their bone density. You know, hey, you went to space, you didn't, and we can get data. All right, we'll give them that. Bullshit, but I'm going to give them that. When you have a twin, they're closer than a regular brother and sister. Would you agree? Sure. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Yeah. None of the twins showed up at any of the funerals. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's all I got to say about that. NASA is evil. Okay. Their logo is a friggin' snake tongue. All right. Yep. Now, <laughs> most of these things I, I've seen, right. I, I've done the dig. Uh, but let me ask I, you a question. What? Right, go ahead. Go ahead. You first. I, I just kind of I, I kind of just want to let you go because you know or like let you keep going because I, again I know a lot of this stuff and I've dug into all this stuff and uh, I, I, I 
the it's, guy, the guy that has a flat earth map again. behind him and a, and a flat earth shirt on says, I'm not a flat earther. <laughs> How psyched would you be if you were the first man on the moon and you got to play golf and drive a dune buggy? Would you be psyched when would. you got back? To, you know, how psyched oh, I would, would you come be back and become an alcoholic like Buzz Aldrin? Would, yeah. Would you, <laughs> would you be this psyched at your press conference? I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it's insanity. And I would say that I am uh, earth shape agnostic. Like the, that's, you know I would Listen, put my you stick can on pussyfoot that. all you want. Deep down inside, <laughs> we know. We know. Come on. The, this two guys, a golf cart, golf, uh, a golf cart, and golf clubs were in this paper mache duct tape and curtain rod vehicle, okay, and and landed on the moon and took off without a problem. Now I I have said definitively, and I still stand by. I do not believe man has gone to the moon. I will say that for sure. Uh, all right, that's good. You know, it's funny. I became a flat earther before I realized the moon landing was fake. It's because I never looked into it. Yeah, I dug into yeah. the flat earth stuff before I dug into the moon landing stuff. It was very strange. And that, then I realized the mountain of evidence that there actually was for the moon landing. I'm like, well, I definitely believe that. But, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about the three body problem. Okay. <laughs> so NASA can make a, a, a simulation in a computer, say, all right, we've got a ball, a giant ball, we'll call it a sun that has X amount of gravity because it's X size. And then we have a smaller ball, we'll call it the earth. And it has X amount of gravity and we're gonna set it in an orbit and it's got its gravity and the model works beautifully. It just orbits and orbits and repeats and repeats and it just goes. Then you add a third body in there. You know how many bodies in our solar system? I think there's like 60 or 80 with all the moons or whatever the number is. You add a third body in there, the entire model falls apart because one tugs on the other and that's it. So we have to believe that this, we have to believe, check this out. This is what we have to believe, to believe in the helio nonsensical model. We have to believe that nothing exploded, created everything, and it was all scattered through the universe. And then all of the dust, dirt, and rocks all came together into rocky planets. But all of the gas, all of the helium uh, came together and formed even bigger balls that lit on fire, right? And it left a vacuum in between them, okay? It sucked it just left a vacuum in between them because of gravity, okay? And then the, the big burning ball grabbed onto the rock that was 238, no, 93 million miles away. 93 million miles away. If you look at the scale model of the sun and moon, it's ridiculous. It's like putting an orange and then, a, then, the, and then the BB is, is like a mile away. It's something ridiculous, mm -hmm. okay? And the, our, the, the sun is holding on to that and it's orbiting. What happens when the moon comes in between them? Wouldn't the sun rip the moon away into its own orbit or at least tug it a little bit, okay? What happens when all of these other planets in our friggin' solar, soul lure system, okay, um, come together? The, the, the sky is a perfect clock. If you go out tonight and, and say, okay, I'm looking from this position here and that star is at the corner of my house and that one's there and that one's there and you make a little chart, Next year, uh, on the same night, and in 10 years from the same night or 10 years ago, you go back out and you look, even though we're traveling billions of miles from where we were, those stars will be in the exact same position. They wouldn't be in the same position two nights in a row, okay? Nothing would with this going on, with this spinning, orbiting, twirling, whirling, and rocketing. None of it would be, but they're in the exact same position. That proves that everything we see in the sky is within the Earth system. The stars are fixed in their position. The wandering stars, which they change, change to planets, um, those, are, uh, those are a whole different, different thing. And, and just for the people that are saying, the Greeks figured it out 2,000 years ago, Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows, okay? That's nonsense. Aristophanes... If he figured out the shape of the earth, and then Neil says within 2%, that's amazing, uh, he'd be a pretty damn famous mathematician, okay? Yeah. Well, nobody put him in any books until the 1980s. There's no mention of Aristophanes' stupid experiment that hasn't been repeated yet <laughs> until the 1980s, where they ended up in textbooks, okay? In school textbooks, brainwashing, okay? Yeah. Um, I, I, not that I believe, we have found evidence, lots of evidence, that everyone on Earth knew the Earth was flat all the way up into the 1920s and 1930s. 
okay? I interviewed a woman in January named Ruth who was 102 years old. And I was talking to her about the World's Fairs, which is another rabbit hole um, that's the wiping out of a previous civilization. And she remembered her fifth birthday party and she was telling me a little Susie and her coconut cake and a present that she got. And she could remember, she was remembering everything. And I said, hey, what did they teach you in elementary school about the earth and science? And she goes, they taught me the earth was flat. And this is, I never really? mentioned flat earth to her. Huh. And so I interviewed her on the spot. I have the video on my, on my, um, it's on the app. It's, uh, it's on my nice. YouTube channel. And she tells the story of how they taught her the earth was flat. We found another woman from Croatia who was taught it in the 1930s. Okay. We found numerous articles uh, on microfilm of teachers that were being persecuted in the 1920s for teaching the heliocentric, uh, you know, satanic religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything before the early 1900s is a lie. Everything. And you have no way to verify it unless you were there. Damn. Okay. Uh, I think that we should jump into some questions. I'm sure you've addressed a lot of them already, but yeah, uh, um, yeah we can kind of go back and forth, throw in a question. You uh, take your time as long as you need to uh, yeah. answer it. But uh, yeah, I like the, uh, the crepuscular rays and all that stuff. Like no matter, no matter how much I ignore this theory, when I look out at the sun, I was actually driving with my kid about a week ago and he was like, you can tell where the sun is by uh, where, how the rays come together. And I was like, Wait, and why would a Theraesophanes, why would he think that the sun rays are coming in parallel? He had to assume that they're coming in parallel. Have you ever seen parallel sun rays? This is what sun rays come in like. Right. So here's the problem with, uh, with, with this. If you triangulate that, that sun is literally just above the clouds. Right. And I've been in an airplane. The sun's not just above the clouds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it, it's a longer discussion, but because of the projected sun theory, which I believe um, as you move, you know how you go down the road, the sun and the moon follow you? Well, mm -hmm. if you go up, the sun and the moon go up too. You, do, you see it in a position relative to your own. And I can demonstrate that easily in a room. Like if I had a uh, sheer blue sheet, we'll call that the sky. And on the far side of the sheet, I had a bright light. I could see a bright spot on that sheet. If you right. were 20 feet, 10 feet to the, my right, you would see that spot on another part of the sheet. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So we see the spot in, and, and as you, and, and that's where the density of the sky where is where the, where the light can manifest. So if you went up, it goes up also. We send balloons up to 120,000 feet. And when we're up that high, um, the sun isn't much higher. It's literally right there. Mm -hmm. um, here, here, this is 120,000 feet for those of you who can see it. Does that sun look 93 million miles away? It's right there. Mm -hmm. It's right there. All right, go ahead. Questions. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And then we're going to get into it. And then, and then I'm going I'm to finish with why the lie. Go ahead. Cool, cool. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions. We won't be able to get to all of them. We're going to start out with uh, people in the Downers Club who support the show. But uh, let's, we will start with uh, Mark Clare says, if the earth is flat, is every astronaut in on it? And if, if you've already answered these, feel free to yeah, no just problem. say you know, check it out. But yeah, there's only a small handful of astronauts that have, uh, you know, supposedly been in the space and they're all liars. Absolutely. Every single one of them is a liar, except Don Pettit. He might just be retarded and think he went to space. <laughs> uh, he says also are, are other planets real or made up to perpetuate the round earth theory made up to perpetuate the round earth theory. As we, as we showed you um, the, their, you know, the images of planets are fake, fake, right? And so why are they faking images if they're real? Okay. They even fake images of earth, right? Look at the United States, twice the size over here than it is here. Two official pictures because NASA will never use the word photograph because that would mean they're lying because that, that, that is a picture. That's not a lie. And Robert Simmons painted this one on, in Photoshop. Go ahead. Okay. Now on, on the thing that we were just talking about, the crepuscular rays and the, you said that, it's not because it's right above the clouds. That's not why it's like, I don't know. Can you explain that a little bit further? Because if it's like a, an illusion or if it's like the, the atmosphere is what's spreading it out, then wouldn't that be the same if it's really far away? So, so I believe that the sun we see, for lack of a better word, is a reflection, okay, okay. through the firmament. Again, I said, as I said earlier, we're speculating things above our heads. I don't know. I don't friggin' know. But 
um, if I had a giant mirror and I had a sun on the other shining in that mirror and we're standing apart, we're going to see the two different suns. Mm -hmm. You have a third person go up to the mirror and draw an X where I see the sun. I'm going to see the sun here and you're going to see the sun over here. Okay. Because we're standing in two different positions and people say, well, you can feel the heat of the sun. This is where I, I came to this real, realization. I was in Vegas. I was out the pool and the sun was, you know, 45 degrees. It's like 3.30 in the afternoon. And the sun is beating on the side of my face. It's really hot. Like, and I just closed my eyes for a second. And the sun, I could feel the heat on my face. But the hotel, you know, 100 yards that way was a, gla- was a mirrored hotel. And the sun was reflecting off of, 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 off of one of the windows. And it was hitting the left side of my face. And when I closed my eyes, I said, is, I couldn't tell the difference in the heat. I knew that the sun was to my right, but the heat was the same. So the yeah. sun was able to reflect the heat off of that window, but somebody sitting on the other side of the pool would see the sun reflecting off of another window and they're feeling the heat off of that. So does that mean that there's two suns? Right. Does that mean there's three suns? We all see the sun. Here, here. We all have a personal relationship with the sun. The sun okay. walks on the water to our feet at sunset. Okay. This is a biblical analogy to many religions, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anthony Meyer asks, how does the ice well work? Does water flow off it into space? Is Mars actually the size of a marble or something? All right. Or is the let's, moon a let's, let's hit the, the, that's two questions. Yeah. And um, how does the, so if you are on a lake in Kansas, let's say we had a big circular lake, a whole bunch of islands in it. And in the center of the lake, we had a pole, a big magnetic, you know, neodymium magnet pole. Okay, you get your compass out, it's going to point towards the center of the lake, you can circumnavigate that lake, go around all the islands, you can go east and west around it. And you're going to circle if you went south, which is any direction away from the center, you're going to hit the edge of the lake in Kansas. Mm -hmm. My question is, can you or the water fall off the lake? No. (laughs) Okay. Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. Okay, Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. When you get to Antarctica, there is an ice wall like two, 300 feet high in some areas, if not the whole way around. I don't know, I haven't been there, but all the pictures I've seen, all the videos show an ice wall. Then there's a ice plateau that it goes on for several hundred miles. And then comes, and maybe even thousand miles, I don't know. Admiral Byrd, you know, went far and he said there's a land bigger than the United States that no human has ever stepped on. And then there's a mountain range that's supposedly higher than Everest. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. We live in the Antarctic basin. Oh, by the way, here's, um, here's the sun going around the projected sun inside this dome. Okay. And so what's holding up the real sun? Well, God's holding up the real sun. And if you watch, that's me and my iPhone. So I'm calling myself God. That's my little joke. <laughs> So, but interesting that's the thing, optics, like, right? Interesting yeah. optics. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm right. saying, look, that can happen. Sure. And, 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 and again, if you get the app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, and go into the uh, what about eclipses, I filmed an eclipse, and I showed something, uh, and then I did an experiment showing how the sun and the moon could be outside of the firmament and create exactly what we see. Hmm. I could even pull it up if you want in a little bit. We we'll get through some questions. Go ahead. Sure, absolutely. Um, now I, I am curious. Like, at any point, do you think that there's that it's an unhealthy obsession to spend your entire life focused? Not that. Like, let's assume that it is true and you're 100 percent correct. Um, do you think that there's any length that you have spent time on this that uh, you could have been? you know, spent better. What should I, else? what should I do? Should I go work for a corporation? Should I go flip burgers somewhere? What, what should I do? You know what we had, um, I live in a, in a townhouse area, uh, townhouse complex. And we had some stonemasons build an amazing wall. These guys were artists. Okay. They loved what they do. Right. Great. Good. That they're, they're, they're loving what they do. That's better than people that are working in corporations, people that are commuting into the city, the yeah. people that are wasting their lives. I am in my home studio. I am having a fantastic conversation with you. Mm-hmm. We're talking about realizing that we live in, the, in this creation and, and expanding our soul, our, 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 our consciousness, connecting with our soul's journey. What is wrong with that? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Sure. Uh, am I obsessed with it? I am fascinated with it. When I lose my fascination with it, maybe I'll stop talking about it. But let me tell you something. There's not a moment that goes by that, it, that I'm like, that's fucking interesting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? Now, Nathan Titus asks, uh, asks for your thoughts on aliens. So great question. Aliens. So the, the, the term alien and extraterrestrial, some people think it's the same thing. I take aliens away. Aliens, people say aliens are demons. Aliens are, are, are whatever. Let, let's just take that away. I like the term extraterrestrial. If you, the words have meaning. Extra terra. Terra is territory. Terra is land. There's more land beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. Okay. And the, the extra, you know, the, the extraterrestrials could come from that land. Here's one um, map. That, um, you know, this is the cosmic egg theory where we're living, we live in the Antarctic basin inside the center. And this is our sun and the moon uh, and the, the whole thing. But then beyond Antarctica, there's another sun and moon. And some speculate that that sun is Mars and the moon is Venus. And there's more lands out there. And then beyond that, in this outer, outer ring, there's Jupiter and Saturn, another sun and moon. Okay. And there's more lands from there. So do extraterrestrials travel? If they came from the closest star, four and a half fucking light years, 25 trillion miles, which if they were going a mile a second, it would take them 500 million years, Mm -hmm. whatever, um, whatever the number is. It's or are they coming across the earth plane? Why are all of the largest telescopes on earth, besides being owned by the Vatican, in the deep south pointing across the land and not up at the sky? Why are they all pointing south, outwards, beyond Antarctica? Mm-hmm. Because that's the outer space. Extraterrestrials come from the outer space across the Earth plane. Now, if you had a telescope, I mean, you would point it out. If you were on a ball and you point it out, it's eventually going to hit space as well. It, it, it pointed on a ball, you're, no matter where you point it, it's going, right. it's going into outer space. Just yeah. like uh, if you were on an airplane um, and, and the pilot forgot, if you're on a ball and the pilot forgot to nose, where's my friggin' thing? I'm talking and I'm supposed to find this at the same time. Um, if you're on an airplane on a ball, I know I have the picture. Um, God, it would have been a beautiful transition if I had just <laughs> been able to pull up the picture. Yeah. Um, oh, here it is. That's not it. That's not it. Where the frig did it go? Wow, I really blew that transition, huh? <laughs> um, on a ball, a, a pilot would have to nose down a mile every two minutes. Otherwise, they would fly off into space, okay? They don't. Airplanes, words have meaning, mm. fly across the Earth plane. Okay. Make sense? It does. <laughs> Where the frig did I had that picture? I literally just saw it a minute ago, and now I'm obsessed with finding yeah. it. You can keep looking for it if um, you want. Uh, I'm going to go and go ask ahead. the next one's from uh, Nathan Sipes. Um, and he and a lot I, of Nathan's. He's, a, he's actually a good friend of mine, one of my best friends. And he and I, he was one of the ones too. He gave me some good questions back in the day, and I was like, I, I don't have the answer. Maybe someday I'll have David Weiss on the show and we'll talk about it. But he said, uh, seismology, P waves, which travel through solids and liquids at a slower rate, and S waves, which travel through liquids at, at all, by using size, seismometers located around the world, we can get a high accuracy image of the structure of the inner earth, namely molten liquid outer core. You can build a uh, seismometer in your garage. Uh, they aren't complex or mysterious. How do you explain that? Yeah. So one, you're trusting the people that are running these things all over the earth that they're giving you actual reporting. Um, I believe it was in the 1960s. Don't quote me on that. Somewhere back then, um, there was a uh, uh, earthquake and a tsunami that hit in Indonesia or something. And where the, the tsunami got to certain locations way before they should have if the earth was flat and way later than they should have if, if, if the earth, I mean, if the earth was a ball, then the earth was a ball. So um, it makes no sense. So, so again, you know, that stuff can actually prove the, the, you know, the layout of the earth. But the problem is 
um, we're getting our information from the liars that are running it. You know, they're, they're, they're the ones that tell us that they have a, um, they have a, a laser reflector on the moon. But meanwhile, they said they shoot, you know, 500 trillion photons at the moon and then they capture one and the machine goes ping. And then look, that proves that there's a laser on the moon. Okay. Right. It's, it's nonsense. Found my picture. So nice. here is the, a plane flying and it would have to nose down, but it's gyro keeps it level and it flies across the earth plane. But if the gravity pulls the gyro or affects the gyro, and uh, uh, gravi- it- uh, the, the, the definition of a gyro is it, it uh, is independent of gravity and that's how planes fly. Um, and it, it holds its rigidity in space, no matter which way you go. Yeah. Now, what about that Netflix documentary, Behind the Curve? You guys were clearly all stupid, and uh, Jaronism is a liar and can't do a test to save his life. Yeah, yeah. So, so, (laughs) yeah, here's here's the comment is, um, the best proof that Globers have, the best proof that Globers have is that a flat earther proved curvature and another flat earther proved uh, spinning, proved the earth spin. So we'll, we'll address both of those very quickly. Jaron had a genius uh, idea along a canal way where he had three um, boards, uh, um, plywood boards with a hole cut out in them and one and a mile apart or a couple a mile and a half apart or whatever they are. Sure. And he, he figured if he could shine a laser through the first hole, through the second hole and through the third hole, that would prove that the earth is flat. And it was all leveled uh, based on the water, uh, a certain height off of the water because water lays level. And um, doing these experiments over distance is very, very difficult. Uh, there's so many things. And um, the, problem, the one thing that happened was the laser melted the condenser. Lasers spread out over distance. But you don't notice that because perspective squeezes them together. Mm-hmm. So when you're shining a laser a mile, it spreads out to like 10 feet. You know? So he has a condenser on this thing, and it melted. So the laser broke. Okay, Not Jaron's fault. Right? This is, you know, these things cost a lot of money. So they didn't know what they were going to do. And there was globe and flat earth observers. So they then said, hey, try, they're, they're radioing back and forth or using cell phones, raise the light up. And he raised the light up. You know, he said, trying to show the light. He said, he can't see it. Now raise it up. And he raised it up and he could see it. And he goes, huh, that's interesting. Because, hey, that, that could mean that there's curvature or it could mean that something else is blocking it. Like right now, what state are you in? Illinois. Can you see my house? I I'm in Connecticut. Checked. I'm yeah. in Connecticut. If you can't see my house, does that mean that the earth is curved? Yes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It means that perspective, mountains, clouds, it, it, it means a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Um, so then they cut it right there. They cut it. And yeah. then they did it again and they could see it, which would indicate there's no curve, okay? Right. But everybody walked away saying there's too many variables, it's inconclusive, and everyone walked away saying nothing, it proved nothing, even sure. though it kind of proved that there's no curvature. But we weren't even gonna go there because it wasn't clear enough. Right. The movie is deceptive and did it on purpose. The next one was the ring laser gyro that, that um, Bob was talking about. He didn't even do the experiment, he was talking about it. Mm-hmm. And, the ring laser, laser, laser gyro showed about a 15 degree shift, okay? So does that mean the earth is, is spinning? Well, it could, or it could mean that the ether is moving, right? Mm-hmm. So one way that they can, they, they can do this is, you t- if you take um, that ring laser gyro and you have it on the ground and it's processing at 15 degrees per hour, you can bring it a mile or two miles up and it still should rotate at the same amount. But we did that. We didn't, I think they brought it up a mountain in Denver or somewhere, and it rotated at a different speed. That proves right there that it's not the Earth spinning because the angle of precession would be the same no matter how high you were if, it were if we lived on a spinning ball. Again, the movie was purposely deceptive to hide the truth. Well, and even if I thought that this was – that. Uh, you had to be mentally unstable to even consider this theory. Uh, l- watching that documentary, um, it's very apparent that it has nothing to do with actually the theory itself. Like they don't even really address the theory. It's just, this is what these people 
they think, made a movie. And this is how they act. They tried to make a romantic movie right. with him, Mark, and Patricia. They tried yeah. to tell a story. You know what? I went and saw the movie. I kind of liked it. I, th- I was sure. like, all right, it's cool, you know. But they was deceptive at the very end. Yeah. And we confronted the um, the the producer the that did it, and uh, he was supposed to give us all of the footage afterwards, and uh, they didn't. He refused. They refused because Netflix signed a deal with them, paid them a shit ton of money. And said, but you can't release any of the other footage because they knew what we would do with it. We would expose the movie yeah. for being nonsensical. Yeah, yeah I, ju- I don't know. I, I, in the last hour and a half, we've covered a thousand times more compelling arguments for the theory than will be in that documentary. So absolutely, absolutely. The movie, kind of- if you want to watch a fun movie, it's a fun movie to watch. Sure. But it, it's, a piece, it's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> which one of these rockets is real? Sorry, I was looking at questions. Uh, which one of these rockets is real? It's going to show it again. Watch carefully. So you got two rockets landing on rafts in the water. Uh-huh. The one on the left looks uh, pretty clean, I'd say. Yeah. So do, do you, if you look at that, that raft out there, the one on the left, it's right. blowing like 20 or 30 knots out there. There's five or six foot waves or five or 10 foot waves. You wouldn't be able to stand on that raft without holding on to something. And this thing's falling out of the sky, 40 tons. And that little flame right there is going to land it on a friggin' bullseye and it's going to stand up. I mean, that thing is like, a hot, it's like 100 or 200 feet tall. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, it not, might not be that tall, but a person can walk under the little legs at the bottom. So yeah. this so is a movie Hollywood. from 1957, a Russian movie. They're showing the exact same thing. This is sure. just predictive programming. Hmm. So you're saying the SpaceX one is the same as the other. And it's I'm all saying just they're both magic. bullshit. They're both, they're both complete bullshit. And, okay. and you know, we were pre-programmed to see that. All right. Uh, let's see. Angle of Polaris from horizon based on latitude north of the equator. Similarly, with the stars around the south celestial pole. I'm going to assume you have any idea what that means because I don't. <laughs> I do. I do. Okay. So um, you theorize on a ball that if you're at the North Pole, Polaris is over your head. And because and you're, you're walking around a ball, that's why Polaris goes down and down. Sure. And that way, when you get beyond the 90 degree mark, the equator, you shouldn't be able to see Polaris because it's below the land. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some observatories, I believe in Brazil or 30, 30 degrees south of the equator that have seen Polaris multiple times. That would be like seeing through Mount Everest, seeing lights on the other side of Mount Everest, okay? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, the reason Polaris goes down is because it's a light in the sky. So imagine this, we're in a room, 10 foot high ceilings, and there's recessed lighting in the room, random recessed lighting in different shapes and now we expand that room to 10 miles wide and you walk three miles away from me, okay? And I say, look up. You're gonna see completely different lights than I see, right? That's why the South sees different lights than we see in the North, right? I'm gonna say, can you, and I'm gonna say, um, to my right, I see one you know, that's like a quarter mile away and, it's, and I'm gonna say, hey, that's the North Star. Can you see it? And the answer is no, it's merged with the horizon. You mm-hmm. can't see it because it has merged beyond the vanishing point, period. That's why the earth is flat and uh, stars drop down just like all the lights in the sky do, like street lights do. Okay. Uh, let's get through some more questions because we've got tons and tons and we're Go not going to get to most yeah, of them. more questions. I'll keep the uh, answer shorter. Sure. I, um, let's see. Some of these aren't questions. One second. Um, so he says, wow, I want one of those glo- one of those globe just to have a sticker saying it is for decoration for, for decoration any globe. Purposes. Go to go to home goods, wherever they sell globes. They all right. say it. Yeah, I had no idea that it was there. I've had this globe for like five years and yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing? Yep. Uh, somebody says and I'm not screening this or anything. So if they're stupid, whatever, uh, if you believe in space, you would believe in aliens. If you believe in aliens, you would believe in the globe theory of earth spinning around in space. We are okay. So this person's agreeing with you, obviously. So, but, but again, I I don't want to get rid of the secret space program. I call it the secret propulsion program, extraterrestrials. I believe that they are here. They visit and they probably speak English. Okay, I have no proof that you're not an extraterrestrial because we're all humans here on Earth. I did a talk called The Outward Flow of Civilizations, and it's where I believe that 
um, over these epochs of time, each civilization moves outwards, okay? So the, the Mayans and all of these civilizations that were here before that disappeared, they moved outwards with their sun and moon as their sun and moon moved outwards. Mm -hmm. So one day we'll move outwards. But imagine if all of the North froze over and never defrosted, we'd all head South. Okay. And then that would be the new Antarctica would be North America and Europe and everything. And then at the center, maybe a new sun is born. Hmm. Sun is born under a star. Interesting. <laughs> Go ahead. Ah, uh, you've got something for everything, don't you? <laughs> I love you know it. What? That's great. the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> How dare you have dare answers you? to all these questions? You must be some sort of stupid person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Sitchling says, uh, how do you know that none of the twins went? That's talking about the funerals and the space shuttle. Because we, we did a ton of research um, trying to find them. I think some people even interviewed them asking um, if they went. And I, I, again, that, I, I don't remember because that was such a long time ago. But mm -hmm. photographs back then, there's no, they didn't go. But that's a good question. That's a good question because maybe they, maybe some of them did and there's just no proof of it. But Again, it's bullshit. N yeah. None of them, none of them, you know, th if you watch, go, if you go uh, on, uh, uh, on the app, on the NASA fakery, um, there's, there's videos about the challenger and there's interviews. There's a, there's a law professor. That's one of that we believe is that we know is one of them. And you hear her talk, you see the dimple on her face. You hear the twang in her voice, every single thing. It's the exact same woman. They're played the a speech side by side. There's no way you could even fake that. So yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Let me see. I don't know. I'm getting all my, my screens mixed up here. Uh, let's just uh, go with Liz Botkin says, if the earth is flat, uh, where is all the magma coming from and what causes earthquakes? Great question. Great question. So um, I, again, Anything above our heads, anything beyond Antarctica is off limits, and anything below eight miles is off the record. So now we know that you know, all, every textbook has that cross section of Earth, shows all the different layers with the molten metal you know, magnetic core, which is impossible, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but the deepest hole ever dug is just short of eight miles. It's in Russia, the, it's a great borehole or something like that. And they were digging and digging and digging, and they were using their ground penetrating radar to see what they're gonna be digging into. And they were wrong every step of the way. Oh, there's no more water, then they hit water. Oh, there's no more rocks, then they hit rocks and whatever. <laughs> and then they got to just short of eight miles and they hit an impenetrable barrier. For years, they tried to drill through it, they tried to blow it up, they tried everything. They could not get through that eight miles, but somehow, they can tell what's the, you know, that's like an apple you're, and you're drilling through the skin of the apple and you almost get through the skin and you can't get any farther, but you know, what's in the core. It's all pseudoscience. We, you know, <laughs> people know what's in the, in the center of the earth because of a fucking meme, right? A meme. It's a, it's a meme with beautiful orange and yellow colors in it. It's all bullshit. So, yes, so fair. what is the magma system? <laughs> I don't know, but here's one that, that I don't want to blow people's heads off, but cone-shaped volcanoes with lava coming out of the top don't exist, okay? There's another fucking rabbit hole, but lava tubes are different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lava tubes are, are that they go all around the earth. They're, they're, they're prevalent in Hawaii. Lava tubes are underneath the earth's surface. I don't know, again, Maybe, do they come from below that barrier? I don't know. Maybe there's where they so come up. So you're saying that no, no volcano eruption has actually no, been documented? No, there's been explosions. You know, Saint, Mount St. Helens. Um, that, that's a whole other question on what that really was. There is lava, but there's no lava coming out of tops of volcanoes. Go and try to find it. You might find a couple of photos, but you will not find any real video. They'll show you a smoking cone-shaped volcano and then they'll show you a close-up of lava somewhere else. It's crazy. Interesting. Again, that, if you want to learn into that, go look up Joey Rocha, okay? He, yeah. He's in Hawaii. He's been to volcanoes. He, 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 uh, he has tons of information on that. But again, it's beyond, it's beyond where uh, I am able to go. Gotcha. I, I think this next one is from a flat earther. They say, I think they're a flat earther that disagrees with you on something. They say, ask him why he still pre uh, presents out of focus lights as quote real stars. So there's a big controversy on these stars on, on what it is. Um, shooting something out of focus a little bit 
um, can, can give you some information, okay? Um, these things, you know, this one is clearly out of focus a little bit, but what the hell is it we're seeing, okay? Yeah. What is it? It, it, it? There's some sort of pulsing energy there. If you look at the Arcturus one, um, that's pretty damn clear if you ask me, right? Yeah. So uh, again, these things are above our head. They're not just burning balls of gas that are trillions and trillions of miles away. So is this person proposing that you're being deceptive by showing video of stars or? Um, there, 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 there's controversy on what the fuck we're seeing here. I right. don't know what we're seeing, but we're not seeing a giant burning ball of gas. Sure. Okay. These things are local and they, they like, why is it every time we look at this star, it looks just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is it, does it always look like this? And again, we're zoomed way in here. Like how do you focus perfectly on something like this? And mm -hmm. what the hell is that? Don't know. Again, don't it's know. interesting stuff. And you know, there's some sharpness to that one, man. That mm -hmm. looking pretty friggin' sharp to me. Now, Chase Oliver asks, if Elon Musk offered to fly you up in a rocket to prove or disprove your theory, would you do it? That is a straw man argument and it'll never happen because it doesn't exist. But of course, but Elon Musk is a fucking moron. He has, he, you know, if you're the, he, he's the CEO of Tesla automobiles. He's the CEO of the, of a giant solar company. He's the CEO of the largest tunneling company. He's the CEO that took over fucking NASA. He's the CEO of, um, was, what, wasn't he PayPal? He, there's no human that can do what this guy supposedly can do and listen to him talk. His famous quote when he launched his stupid car into space, which is nonsense, was, you know the quote? It almost doesn't even look real. That's how it, you know it's real, right? Something like that. You, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. We'd have much better CGI. That's the most <laughs> intelligent thing he's ever said, okay? Elon yep. Musk is a puppet it's almost the puppets like, that control him. It's almost like it was his first time watching the video and he's like, you know, we could do better than that, right? Why did we, why did we do that? <laughs> yeah. Wait, let me ask you a question. Pretty cool that they sent a car into space, right? So let's yeah. imagine this is real, right? How, there's Tesla showrooms all over the world, okay? How come there's not a poster of that in every Tesla showroom? How come it's not on the cover of Time Magazine, National Geographic, Popular Science? It wasn't in any magazines, and there's not a photo of it in any dealership. Are you kidding me? It would be the cover of your instruction manual. That's okay? true. It would be everywhere, <laughs> yeah. right? It's nowhere because it's nonsense. So Elon Musk is just in on it and he's not really a private company? Is I think Elon saying? Musk is on the lines of Don Pettit. He's absolutely retarded. Okay. So he's just a puppet uh, he's put a puppet. in his position. Okay. He's a puppet um, playing a role. Just like uh, I believe Werner von Braun is not a Russian Nazi that was brought over to run NASA. He's an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going through a lot of these questions. A lot of them we've already addressed. So I don't want to like spend too much time. So here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. As I said before, sure. the globe has a huge advantage over flat earth. You can just believe the globe. You can believe it and go along with, the, with everyone else and no one will attack you except maybe yeah. a few angry flat earthers. But you know, what, what do we matter? We're just crazy people. Yeah. Take the flat earth app challenge. Okay. Watch the video every day and learn something new. And don't, don't watch this and go, holy shit, the earth is flat. Go, holy shit. I have some studying to do. And the best way, and who's got extra, extra time. We're all, you know, most, a lot of people have a lot of time this year because of what's going on, but sure. to find an extra hour during a day, every day, that's difficult. We'll find a several hours. I put a short video up during the week, two, three, four, five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe, right? And then longer ones on the weekend, just watch it. Just watch one video a day. And I guarantee you're going to hit that friggin' uh, archive button. And if you do, bring water and food, okay? And a blanket because <laughs> you're going to be up for a long time. Yep. Well, cool. Um, let's, let's see if we can uh, work in one or two more here. Uh, and then we'll let you go. But... Uh, is NASA is NASA governmental money laundering uh, or something more nefarious? Is there more to NASA than just this big money laundering scheme if the Earth is flat? Yeah, I, so NASA gets $65 million a day. Well, that's the budget, okay? 
I don't believe it. I don't believe they need $65 million a day. They're just a Hollywood studio, okay? There's nothing more. I mean, I can do half the shit they do with my shitty little green screen, okay? Sure. Um, it's, NASA is just a way where they take money from us. It's part of the slave system. Um, they are here to hide the, the true earth. They, so here's the, we never got into why. why. Why the friggin' lie, okay? Because before all of this, I was basically described, the best way to describe me is I'm an atheist. Uh, you know, the, there's no God, evolution. Um, and we're here to do the best that you can, be as good as you can be, and, and that's it. Um, but when I realized, holy shit, the flat earth is real, well, the flat earth is intelligently designed. It's like, you know, you can look at a rock and you can look at a MacBook Pro, okay? One of them was intelligently designed, actually, horrible example because that rock was probably something completely different sure. and that's another rabbit hole but um <laughs> the earth is intelligently intelligently designed therefore there's a creator so instead of believing that i am on a rock uh, on a speck spinning through an infinite vacuum where i could crash into a meteor uh, asteroids global warming um running out of food and fuel and everything a lost in space spinning out of control in all those different directions at once um, I am at the center of creation. So when you realize that you're at this flat, you realize that you're at the center of creation. You respect this creation and you find that there is a creator and that you are a powerful being having a soul's journey that you have amazing power. People say flat earth is a psyop. The psyop is believing that you're powerless and that you can't do anything against the elite. We are the many, they are the few. Okay. Our thoughts create our reality and they don't want you to know that your thoughts create everything that you have, including your poverty level, your success level, your podcast, your car, everything, your thoughts create your reality. People go, well, I, I want a million dollars. Basically when you say that you're saying, I, I don't have a million dollars and I'm never going to have a million dollars. That's what you're saying in your head. Right. So your true thoughts, your true intentions, um, create the world around you. They don't want you knowing that. Um, every flat earther that I know, I went to a conference just a month or in October, um, that, uh, there was 400 of us there, none of us wearing masks, none of us falling for the bullshit that's going on in this world. None of us have gotten sick. Um, and all of us are happy and, and we're having great lives and we're all good people. Right? So if everyone woke up to the flat earth tomorrow morning, Okay. If everyone took my app and gifted it to everybody else and everyone had it, right. And everyone realized it, the elite would be done. Governments would be finished. The monetary system would be over. The world would be freed from this fucking tyranny that we have allowed to happen. Because if you can believe that you're on that spinning speck lost in space, you can believe that's a little virus that can go 5.9 feet from you from a healthy person to another healthy person and kill them without any symptoms. Getting into getting into other territory there, but uh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love all of it. Um, and I, I'll say that the, that's the thing that I love most about this theory is uh, in the thought process and everything of once you, if you can humble yourself enough to say maybe and look at this for for everything that Dave has said for the last two hours, uh, just the this idea that we are not so random, we are not so uh, meaningless and purposeless and um pale blue dot speck on a speck on a speck floating around in the in the vastness of everything if like just having that kind of uh mental process i think is is healthy uh, like realizing that you have value that you have intrinsic value that was given to you, you or power you, you have great with. power they cannot take anything from you unless you agree everyone's freaking out that they're, they're doing this or taking that no you're agreeing to it they tell us everything that they're doing and then by us not saying no is saying yes Okay, we live in this amazing system where we have God given free will and they can't take it from us. They can trick us into giving it away willingly. But once you see through that, you take your power back and, and life is amazing. So am I obsessed with this? I am obsessed with the power that I've taken back. I'm obsessed sure. with what a great life I'm having. Right. 2020, best year ever. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy, right? And I mean, world is gone people's lives are being destroyed but 
you, you have to see what's going on. The one good thing about what's going on is people are waking up. People are waking up by what's going on. Big events through history, I don't even mention them, have woken up massive people. A big one near me in New York woke me up, okay? And now look at me. Yeah. And I would say we, we do have a lot of, uh, like I said at the beginning, we have a lot of libertarian listeners who got into this show because we talk about politics as well. If you are a libertarian, like, I know that this is stupid. I know that this is retarded. But so is your entire political ideology. Like, your political <laughs> ideology is, I don't trust the system. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the man. All, all Dave is asking is, hey, let's take that a few steps further. What if they lied about more than the things that you already believe that they're constantly lying about nonstop? They're lying about so much and all of the information is there for anyone willing to see. The problem is the, the, the programming is so strong and so many that they're unwilling to look. Wow, unwilling to look? I, my favorite shows to go on are the ones that go, hey, by the way, we think Flat Earth is stupid and we're gonna embarrass you. I'm like, can we do it tonight? You know, let's not <laughs> wait. Because the problem is I hate it when those people, they start preparing for the show and then they go, oh, homo, oh, homo. Oh, they start oh, researching. Uh, and my like, schedule got full. All of a shit, there's a problem and they cancel. So when, when anyone sure. hates it, I'm like, I'll knock somebody out of the schedule so I can fit you in first. Sure. Now, right? Dave, would you be willing to come back on if I can find somebody who can uh, come up with a strong argument that they think that they can, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I will. But here's the problem. You, it, it, you, there, there's all that first. <laughs> there's three categories of people. The one yeah. there's innocent people that uh, that um, have no idea what the flat earth is. And they sure. think that the, they think they have a good argument. Happy to talk to them. Then there's the, the globe trolls, which are probably paid or, or incentivized in some way to just put up their ridiculous arguments. And that's pointless other than educating other people on how stupid they are. Sure. Um, I don't engage in those. There's plenty of other shows that do that. And then there's the professionals, you know, like an astronomer or whatever, uh, you know, physicist um, that literally if they start researching, they'll cancel on you. They won't come. They'll be like, there's a problem and I'll lose my job. Or there, there's really no, but you could try, but um, sure. it, it's, not, it's not an easy task. Sure. And I'm just not into the debates because basically we're at the point right now, uh, there's people that aren't going to wake up. Fine. Live sure. on your cartoon ball. I mean, you know, I, I, there's nothing I can do for you. Well, I'll put the call out there. People can send me an email at dan at tsidpod.com. If, if you know one of these right. really smart, sciencey people, if you know somebody who's <laughs> like a professor or something so, so let me, let we'll me show you right here this is my drone on a super clear day i filmed the sun it came down 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 and then it sat right at this horizon here for 10 minutes okay this is super sped up it just sat there and it stopped going down and then watch what happens it gets smaller and smaller but it's not about the size it's not going down below the horizon and it just fades away super clear day the How does that make sense on a flat earth though? It, this is on a flat earth. It, it, it's not going over a horizon. My friends down at the beach saw the sun set below the, below the horizon 10 minutes earlier. Okay, that's all just due to perspective and atmospheric uh, density. But I'm up high enough, super clear day. This horizon right here is not land. This is atmosphere density, okay? And the sun's light, can't push through and it just disappears and it literally sits there and it just goes around so it's called the sun fade out i filmed it seven different times it's on the app um it's on my youtube channel d-i-t-r-h the initials for deep inside the rabbit hole um check out my podcast the flat earth podcast soundcloud itunes any podcast player will have it start at the beginning five episodes you're toast you're a flat earther so don't watch it don't listen to it unless you're ready for ridicule and torture. <laughs> yeah, for, the, for those of you who are sick of me talking about Flat Earth on this show, just know there's a show called The Flat Earth Podcast. Even the though Flat it's Earth a little Podcast. uncreative, yeah, there, there's way more than we're going to be able to address in this. Easy to remember. Easy <laughs> so, to remember. <laughs> yeah. But there, there's tons of stuff out there uh, if you guys want to dig into it. Again, reach out to me if you have like thoughts or whatever. Can't guarantee anything, but... Uh, Dave, is there anything else that you want to plug? Any, any other place that uh, people can find your stuff you got going on? Um, that, that's it. The, the app is the way I support myself, uh, $2.99. Again, there's a $0.99 cent subscription. If you want it, you don't have to do it. You can exit out. No waiting, no commercials, no problem. Um, a lot of people sign up. You can do it for 11 bucks for the year. Don't even have to do it. Just get the app, and I'm super happy. 
Um, and I'm more happy. I'm more happy that you're gonna that you're gonna see the light. And um, for those of you that have the app, anyone, the most most people that are flat earthers do have it. Gift it to your family and friends, okay? For for Christmas, it's the cheapest gift. And what's better when you're a flat earther than making a family or friend a flat earther at the same time? <laughs> that way, you have someone you can talk to. Yeah, yeah. I uh, um, still don't so, have any family or friends that are buying it. So, <laughs> well, I, I've I've lost some family, I've lost some friends, but I've gained a whole new family of friends sure. in this in this amazing flat Earth community. So you can just point your camera right there if you're, if you're watching this on a computer and the, the app will come right up on your phone. It's the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Longest name ever, but there's a method behind the madness. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love it. and Apple. I love it. I, uh, I was digging into it this morning, like I said, before we got on here. It's really cool. I can't wait to do some more digging, especially in a time when YouTube doesn't let you, you know, actually find things anymore. That's what but. it's all about. I had a big, big server update today where... Uh, um, if you downloaded it recently or updated it, um, I think the, I'm not sure if the iOS one is 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 ready to download yet, but um, I can now change all sorts of information on it away from YouTube because I was only able to put YouTube on it before, but now I could put any other videos I want on there. So, mm -hmm. um, app gets better and better every day. I haven't slept in two and a half years since I created it <laughs> because I have to talk to India every day, oh. and that's at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Sure. Well, Dave, it's been awesome. I love having you on. Um, I look forward to doing it again in the future. I'm going to have to do some more digging myself. It's been a while, and I'm going to come up with a strong argument, whether it's yeah. somebody else's or my own. I'm going to find the straw that will get me that $1,000, and I'm yeah. going to have you back on, man. Or 10000 either way. <laughs> so <laughs> It's all made challenge. up anyway. You yeah, spend guys. three bucks and take the challenge and come up with a proof, and I'll give you $1,000, okay? Sounds good. 1000 bucks. <laughs> fun no I, I love it I, I think it's awesome and I, I love talking to you man um yeah uh you're welcome here whenever you want and uh, i look forward to having you again in the future all right man reach out thanks thanks for having me and peace everybody look there's truth out there you just have to be willing to see it you can lead oh, what's the what's the term you can lead a man to flat water but you can't make him think <laughs> how's that there's a better there's a better one nathan thompson has this great quote i have to i just remember it because i'm gonna steal it but, uh, I like it. Well, I'm going to kick out of this live stream, but uh, to all you guys, go join the Downers Club at patreon.com forward slash the system is down. And uh, we'll talk at you next time. Bye. Cool. We are not live anymore. But, uh, so you can lead a man to flat water, but you can't make him think critically about the shape of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, right? That is really good, actually. <laughs> Damn. That would have been a good closer. Damn it. Well, we're still recording. Maybe I'll release it anyway. All right. That's, oh, that's perfect. Do that. Dun, dun, do, dun, 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 do, do, dun. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe on your way out and help us change the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time. And if you like what you hear and you want to hear more, go join the Downers Club at patreon.com forward slash the system is down for bonus episodes of the show every single week. Until next time, please continue to question everything, stand comfortable, and I'll talk to you then. Thanks. This has been a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. This concludes our broadcast day. Click.